Hi guys, Paul here from New Zealand. Just setting up a little test bench here to see if I can put some data to the age old question of uh, where should you place your capacitor? Should it go on the ESC? Is it okay to put it directly on the battery connector? Is it okay to extend it with some long wires? I'm going to test a few different combinations today and uh, hopefully have some definitive information rather than just, oh that works well, that doesn't work well, but we're not quite sure why. So here I've got a 2806.5 1300kV motor with a pretty beat up old prop on it. I've got an old school FVT little b 30 amp ESC. I'm pretty sure it's just running BL Halley, so not S or BL Halley 32, just stock BL Halley. But that won't really matter for what we're trying to figure out today. Then I've just got that wired to a little receiver going to my trusty old Tyrannus that I don't use much these days. And I've just got it on a free position switch. And using uh, a custom curve, I've configured it so that switch all the way up is off. Here is about a 20% idle, and then all the way down is around about 40% throttle, which seems to be enough to get the scope to move. Currently, I have the scope set uh, so that each each divider on this grid is worth one volt. So if I wind that up so that it's it's level there, we'll be able to see how much it's tracking. So right off the bat, we've with no capacitors and only a, a little 4S battery that's sitting at about 15 volts, it's pretty pretty flat. I'll swap that for a bigger success shortly. You can see that there's actually two battles that we're facing here, and I believe that we need a different solution to account for both of them. The first of which is that when the motor is running, we've got this noise here, and that noise is approximately one volt. So that, that's, that's something, and that's at relatively low RPM, uh, and, and that noise does need to be cleaned up. That noise, though, is extremely high frequency. As you can see here, each, each grid on the, the y-axis here is 50 microseconds. So in reality, the frequency of that noise is probably uh, up around whatever the PWM rate your ESC is running. I'm actually not sure what PWM rate I'm running here. And I haven't crunched the numbers to tell you what frequency that is, but it's a really high frequency. The other thing that we have going on, however, is when I start the motor, watch the spike. See how it spikes to like quite a bit above the, the, the RMS noise? And then when I increase the RPM, you get that massive spike. But not only do you get that spike under acceleration, but when I click the switch down, you can see that it makes a massive spike there as well. Now that's a relatively small requested RPM change. That's only going from about 10% throttle up to about 35 to 40%, which is really, in fact, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's about 30%. And so that's a tiny little requested throttle change. However, as you can see, even on the deceleration, it's spiking around about three volts above the, the VCC input. And that's just one little motor on one little ESC with no capacitors. So it looks like potentially to solve this, we're going to need a, a dual approach. One will be a, a smaller capacitor right on the ESC, which will soak up this, this RMS noise, which is happening in the, in the kilohertz range. And then for those big voltage spikes, I think that's where you're going to need your, your big capacitors to, to soak that up and prevent those spikes hitting 35, 40 volts and blowing up your voltage regulators or worse, causing a freeze on your air unit, which seems to be quite common, especially with the cine lifters. So anyway, I'm going to now start placing some ESCs in various locations. I'm going to set it up. The reason I've got it on a switch is so that it's directly comparable as long as the battery voltage stays roughly the same. And I'm going to test some capacitors in different locations and a few different combinations. And I'll keep you up to date as we go. So this is the test bench. I've got a motor here clamped down to the bench running to an ESC. Running to our uh, oscilloscope pickup lines going through this probe like so. Running to this old oscilloscope. I'm going to attach some info about what each test is onto the front of it. So you can see it in the frame as I do the test. Currently we're running on 4S because the scope doesn't like too high of an input voltage. But it was free. Then running from the ESC I've got these two 18 gauge silicon wires. I'm going to be attaching a capacitor to the end of here. And then uh, between tests I'm going to continue to shorten these wires. All the way down until the capacitor is soldered directly to the ESC. I'll be making notes about that up here. 
and I will be filming the oscilloscope in slow motion because with an old fashioned scope with no hold button, that's what you have to do. Let's have a look. So here we have all of the data side by side. If you're on a small screen, you may struggle to see it, but it shows clearly the difference between a long extension on the capacitor and a short piece of wire or directly soldered. So the test is going as described from idle to 70% throttle down to idle again. And as you can see, there's a, a clear spike when you jump from idle to 70, and then there's another spike when you jump from 70% back to idle. As you can see, as we shorten the cable, the amplitude is getting smaller and smaller. Um, as you can see by my on-screen voltage uh, rounded to the nearest volt, it's pretty inaccurate. So if you want to dig into this a little bit more, feel free to pause and compare from uh, frame to frame. And the, the graph on the front of the scope there is set to, to 2 volts per cube square, two-dimensional. Anyway. As we keep rolling through these, you'll see that they get better and better as the cable gets shorter. But the difference from a 4cm cable to no extension at all is actually quite a big difference, so do keep that in mind. One more thing to consider is that the voltage axis of the scope is inverted, so up is negative and down is positive. If you are going to pause this and dig into it a little bit deeper, you may want to know that. So I've just tested different lengths all the way down to uh, directly attach to the battery pads there. And I've also tried adding a second thousand microfarad capacitor right there across the pads as well. The results are somewhat as expected and quite interesting. So uh, things to keep in mind as you review the, the results is that uh, the capacitor was added to the, the battery pads of the ESC um, via a, an ever shortening length of cable however the oscilloscope is picking up at the xt60 i'm going to do a few more experiments to confirm some thoughts i have about this but that that's a little bit of background information to let you view the data with everything you need to know about it so one final experiment that i believe uh, is really some important information to consider when you're doing a new build what I've done is I've taken these two little tiny 24 or maybe 26 gauge wires off to a little tiny 330 microfarad uh, 25 volt capacitor. I just uh, racked it off an old ESC out of my mini spare parts bins. Anyway, I've extended that on the end of these these thin little wires. They have reasonably high resistance, but that's not too dissimilar from your, your normal run from your mains battery pads to your voltage regulator which in turn goes to your flight controller. So anyway, after putting this on it, have a look at the trace. It's kind of surprising for me, um, but also sort of to be expected, but shows how important it is to potentially run a little capacitor in front of your voltage regulator or directly on your flight controller. Wow, that is some interesting data and there is a lot of conclusions to be drawn from it um, and also so much more testing needed for them to be uh, real conclusions. Overall, to summarise it a little bit, I think uh, the concluding statement is very much put capacitors near things that you want to protect. As you can clearly see, even with no capacitor, on the ESC itself, just on the end of these these little wires. I suppose that's a form of an LC filter and it acts as an inductor, but just a little 330 UF capacitor all the way out here when I clamp it onto here with no cap here, looks beautifully smooth, almost no, no interference or whatever you want to call it coming out of there. Um, however, when I obviously leave this this cap on out here and I put the, the probes on, on the ESC and measure that, it's, it's terrible. So long story short, put capacitors next to whatever needs protecting. That is going to be your ESCs, you're going to need some caps there, but also putting a little cap on your flight controller, on your BEC, on your air unit, goes a long way.
Well, I think this is one of those problems where the more you know, the more you realize you don't. And so I've really hardly even scratched the surface of this problem. And I'm sure there's some experts in our country and around the world that know infinitely more than I've figured out today. So if anyone else would like to continue with this problem and take it a little bit further, and if they're willing to share some insight back into the community, that would be very much appreciated. Some things I can see going forward that would be worth testing uh, is first of all getting a decent oscilloscope that you didn't find in someone's rubbish bin that uh, has a, a hold function and maybe even some data logging. That would be really nice. Some other things that need testing is um, obviously I've only been switching from, from idle to 70% and back again, but we all know that in flight that is not what our ESCs do. If you ever look at the motor trace log inside of Black Box Explorer, you'll see that it's really chaotic and so... While the RMS, I'm calling it RMS, while the average average noise coming out of these ESCs at 70% when it's sitting there in a relatively steady state is not all that bad even with no capacitor, it's very rare for our ESCs to actually be operating in that steady state. So it would be nice to find a way, maybe write a little script for, for Betaflight or, or an OpenTX or just an Arduino to run it through a much more aggressive uh, test. It could also be, in fact, not also, it, it would be nice to test some larger motors, some larger ESCs. It would be nice to test the interference patterns of the noise coming out of the different channels of a 4-in-1 ESC. Obviously, I've just tested one single ESC with one single small capacitor. I can imagine that when you have four ESCs operating at different RPMs, Sometimes those frequencies add to each other, sometimes they subtract from each other, and so that noise could be even more all over the place and far more chaotic than anything we've seen here. Um, yeah, so much more to learn about this. I feel like I'm at a point now where I can be confident when I'm building a new aircraft, I can have a little bit of insight into where to put capacitors and where not to put capacitors and how to prevent uh, a capacitor induced disaster or lack of capacitor induced disaster so i feel like i've kind of ticked this off for me for what i need to know for now but as someone who likes to understand things if anyone else is willing to put some time and effort in and take this further it would be much appreciated i hope you enjoyed watching this video and hopefully it's it's given you a little bit of insight as i've certainly picked up from it and uh yeah enjoy the rest of your day